I wanted to have a look at visual headers in this video because they're one of those things in Power BI that are sometimes quite tricky to get right. There's a few different options and sometimes it's difficult to know precisely which ones to use and which options to take. So first of all, with visual headers, what you can do with them, if you don't want to see them at all, is switch them off completely throughout the entire report. And how you do that is, is really simple. You go to your file, you go to your options and settings and your options. And when you get to your options, you can just check a little box and it's this one right here under current file and then your own report settings. If you click here, hide the visual heading in reading view. If you click on okay, which I'm not going to do, but if you click on okay, what that will do is your visual headers that you can see here, once you publish the report, none of these will be visible. They're still visible in the PBIX, but when it's published, you can't see them at all. That's great. And I think it looks quite um, clear. It makes you know the visuals a bit more um, yeah, clear when you, when you hover over them because you don't get things popping up. So I've published this report. And in this example, when you hover over certain visualizations, you have all this. And for a user, that could potentially be confusing. You're like, oh, what's that? If you don't know, or there are too many options. Um, so if these just don't exist at all, when you hover over visualization, it can look a little bit cleaner. However, if you do switch them all off, your drawback is you can't decide, ah, oh, but actually for one visualization, I do want to show them. No, if you check this box, you've switched them off, they're off forever. So though it's nice to do that, I would recommend that you don't. I often build reports and I say, I'm just going to switch them all off. And then when I actually start building the report and I get a certain visualization, I'm like, ah, okay, I've got to switch them off because I need it in this visualization. So generally it's good to leave them switched on. When you leave them switched on, you also have lots of different, different options as to, you know, so now if I go to my visual headers, I can see there are all these, these options going down, like which ones do I need? That can be quite confusing because which ones do you need? And to be honest, quite often I look at them and I don't even know which one is which. The information, the warning, the error icon, um, the drop down and uh, sorry, the drill on, drill up. These things are a little bit clearer, but because there's no um, visual rep um, representation of the button, it's hard to know which one is which. Of course, again, looking at the report, one of the major benefits of using it is here you have your expand one level down. You can click on that. You can click on back up. So for that sort of thing, they're really, really helpful. But one thing I would do want to focus on is the visual header tooltip. To me, that is pretty much the biggest win of using your visual headers. With the visual header tooltip, actually by default, it's the only one that is switched off. And you have to go here at the very bottom to switch it on. And once you switch it on, you get this extra, so switch it off here, you see, I get nothing. I switch it on again, and I scroll down, you have this visual header tooltip. What that allows you to do is to use um, a tooltip. So in like a normal tooltip, you can create a separate page as a tooltip and link them together, or you can write some text and provide more information. So now on a really basic level, if I were just to remove this, and I'll sort of go example and just use that nice big text. This here with the question mark is my visual header tooltip and I hover over it and I get this example is what I just typed. However, I'm not going to do that. And um, you could use that where I've typed example to provide some static information about what sort of visualization you're currently looking at. Why not? But you can do something a little bit cooler with it. A couple of things. On this visualization, what I've done is I've created a second page. It's a tooltip page. And on this tooltip, I have basically, so here I've shown it's a tooltip page, which is the first thing you have to do as on all tooltip tool pages. Um, but I haven't got, actually got any visualizations here at all. But my page background, what I've done is I've recorded myself using this visualization and I've saved it as a GIF. And for this GIF, what I can do is put it as the background and it could potentially help the user 
see what they have to click on to make it work. Now this is of course is a very basic example, but if you have something that's a bit more complex, it could help the user. So if I go back now to my, um, my report page, and I go back to here, and then I go back to my um, visual header tooltip. And what I'm gonna do is from report page, I wanna link it, and then I will then hover over, and you should see when I hover over, yeah, I get my tooltip. So if I just jump to the published version of the report, again, hover over, and you can see now, it's a bit small, I could have made it bigger, but as you can see now, I can click on the button, so I click on the expand one level um, down in the hierarchy, and it does so, and the arrow back up again, just to show the user what the buttons actually do. So you can even use the visual header tooltip to provide some clarity into the visual header itself, which is pretty nice. Um, yeah. What I've also done, I've created a second page within my report, another tooltip page, and I have linked it to this visualization. So this visualization, on your normal tooltip, you can just see your standard information. I could, of course, use it, the tooltip and provide more information, but what I decided to do is link a tooltip page which shows the same information that I have in this visualization but I'm gonna show it geographically, yeah? So instead of just showing it top to bottom with the values, which is a good way of, of course, um, displaying data, if there is a user or users who are potentially interested in also seeing the geographical location, you can yet then display the same information in a map. And that map, when you hover over, is gonna show all the same information here but in a geographical way. You could, of course, argue that I could just display that information in a normal tooltip and just go and report page and tooltip here. So when I hover over, it shows me that. And that, of course, is only showing me one value. Why is it only showing me one value? Simply because, obviously, the tooltip is only showing it to the value that I'm hovering over. So it, it's filtering it based on the value that I'm hovering over. But if I don't want that, if I want to show all of them, I do it that way. And that provides a bit of extra insight without actually needing another page uh, uh, for a drill through or another visualization on this page. And that's a great way of doing it. Um, I would also suggest that if you use only certain um, visual headers, that you switch off the ones that you don't need. So here, for example, on this visualization, what I've done is on my visual headers, I've switched off everything other than the visual header tooltip. So when I actually go to the publisher report, you can see when I hover over, I only get that one. I don't have all the others like you have here because I'm not using them. So for this one, I only have that. And it makes it a little bit clearer. On this one, of course, I could leave this one switched on and the drill up and drill um, drill down. So that's it. Visual headers can be a bit of a pain, can be very helpful. Best to only use them when you're adding information that is valuable. Don't just leave them switched on for because they're on by default. Here, for example, we have a text box and it has a visual header. A text box does not need a visual header. So just switch it off. Just looks weird and um, is unnecessary. That's it. Um, I hope that helped. Hope that gave you a couple of ideas. Uh, feel free in the comments, write something. Let me know if you have any, any better ideas, if you use them in any, any cool ways. Let me know if you disagree with me. Um, and if you like the video, click the like button. And if you wanna see more of these videos, click the subscribe button. Thank you very much and goodbye.